Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called How Focal Length Affects Camera Distortion. So when preparing a 3D scene, or even a 2D scene that will be drawn or painted in a realistic perspective, choosing the correct focal length for your camera lens can be a really important decision. As well as different lenses affecting mood, it can also affect the kind of distortion you get, which can enhance or detract from your subject. So this lesson will go over how your lens's focal length can affect distortion. Now I'm not going to get into all the math behind focal lengths. There's plenty of other YouTube tutorials out there that cover this in depth. But in short, the focal length is the distance from your lens to the focal plane where the light of the image is collected. There are wide-angle lenses that have a short focal length, such as a 16 to 20 millimeter lens. There are telephoto lenses that have a large focal length, like a 100 millimeter, and of course, plenty of lenses in between. Our human eyes have a focal length of approximately 50 millimeters. Also, when you hear the term zoom lens, this is a lens that has a dial that lets you go from one focal length to another. Now, sometimes using a wide angle lens can look great. For example, in an environment, it can give this epic sense of scale by providing very dynamic perspective lines. It can also be good for other subjects, like the spaceship looks a lot more dynamic with a wide angle lens than with a telephoto lens. But if you've ever done a little portrait photography, you probably know a wide angle lens looks horrible with human faces if the subject is close to camera. See the example on the left. This is a 16 millimeter lens, and this 3D character's face is really distorted. Everything close to the camera bulges out like the character's nose, and anything further from the camera is tiny and pinched like their ears. Wide angle lenses make even the most appealing character unappealing. This is why people tend to look bad in selfies on phones. Most of them have wide angle lenses, and so if you take a photo of yourself close up, you get this nasty distortion that makes us all look unappealing. But this issue doesn't only affect people. I recently did some work where I had to do a render of a vehicle. For this example, I'm going to use a low poly previs 3D car. Now look what happens when I use a wide angle lens. So not only is the result distorted, but you can see the front of the car and basically nothing else. Now this is a very dynamic image. The distortion adds some excitement to it. But with the front hiding 90% of the rest of the car, you're hiding the subject, which is likely going to make the client unhappy. It's similar to the nose of the human bulging out. Just in this case, it's the hood of the car. In fact, this was a common concern on a certain film by a certain animation company, where the hood of the car was basically the character's nose. And it's not just cars, anything with this shape. Like for example, this other film by the same animation company, it's basically the same problem. If you have a wide angle lens close up, you see all nose and very little eyes. So when composing these sorts of images, except in very specific cases, a wide angle lens may not be the best choice. Now you can go too far in the opposite direction. Like for example, let's do this 100 millimeter telephoto lens. So you definitely see more of the car, but it flattens out the perspective, which makes the image less dynamic. This is why something in the 35 to 50 range is probably a good compromise. You see that it's still a little bit dynamic in terms of the perspective, but without major distortion. So next time you want to capture a 3D subject, whether it's a human face, a car, or anything in between, remember to try out a few different focal lengths to discover the proper balance between distortion, dynamism, and readability for your subject. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you want more tutorials like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the education section. Or if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.